Hey guys, it's Zekin and welcome to the Hutan Rimba Conservation Center, a collaboration project between Stoppable San and I, which we started planning for right just after the pack was announced. And a couple weeks later, we were able to finally complete it and we're here to give you a tour of everything we've done so far. So as it usually goes, I did all of the building, architecture, and just overall layout design, while San did all of the different habitats for all the respective animals. With that out of the way, sit back, relax, and enjoy the tour. So, like I said earlier, I'm joined by Stoppable San. Hey guys. Our main source of inspiration for this project was the Ubud Palace, which is located in Indonesia. What really stuck out to us was the striking use of orange, which makes it really stand out of the jungle scape background. And I think that's something we really wanted to implement in into this project as well. So we really wanted to have this open air courtyard outdoor experience for this whole place because um, obviously in the climate they are, it wouldn't really make sense to keep everything completely indoors. So here is the temple, which is kind of like the main weenie for the whole center and also acts as the entrance to the museum, which we'll get to later on in the video. That's why don't we head on to the proboscis monkey enclosure. This is done by Stopple San and it, it's just amazing the way you're able to put foliage together and make it look and feel like a jungle and he actually did this on two tries like the first time he didn't really like how it looked so he went for a second go and i think that was very much worth it i actually based this enclosure in particular off of the singapore zoo they have a split level exhibit that they share with uh, various types of turtles, fish, and even an Indian muntjac. So yeah. uh, one of the things they did, of course, uh, they are well known for very, very lush plantings, and they had like these bromeliads near the water. They have, yeah. they have like water lilies, hyacinths, and stuff like that, as well as like a very, very rich um, aquaculture in terms of the garden um, for the underwater viewing. Over here we have a like a little peephole for people to just get an extra view into their enclosure. A little bonus view, yeah. Yeah, and especially because we have most of like the climbing structures around here, so this is like a really great view over here where you get to see them do all their stuff. You can really see the freakiness. <laughs> and how like human like yeah. they swim and i think frontier really got got it well with the animations of the swimming oh yeah the, these are these are amazing amazing animals okay so we're going to be looking at the other enclosures at this side of the uh, sanctuary this area of the sanctuary yeah. is kind of like the olden more much more old area in which we imagine that they kind of built this part first and had a couple animals in and then when they got extra money they expanded it over to that area so probably like some of the enclosure over there are like much more newer but then over here it's much more ingrown much more um worn down kind of ish but they still did their best to keep it up and yeah if you look at the planting over here it's much more um like unkept in a way compared to the other side which looks like it's more new and really planned out and everything so uh why don't we head into here which is the right. clouded leopard exhibit and what it's, do you have to say uh, about it's this very one? sunny for a clouded leopard exhibit eh? <laughs> eh? i'll see myself out yeah <laughs> so um obviously our foliage artist sobo san did this amazing habitat as well and what was your inspiration behind this one uh this one was actually based off the singapore night safari uh they have the most they have this most amazing uh, clouded leopard habitat where um actually the entire park is set up in such a way like there are these massive arc lights that are somehow dimmed to look more like moonlight and obviously at night um, when you um, go and see this place you'll see uh, like some very dim spotlights just highlighting the leopards because of course clouded leopards are nocturnal species yeah obviously the elephant in the room we have this um beauty over here which is the giant malaysian leaf insect enclosure and 
from the people who can tell this is basically the one i made for the frontier live stream but i just recolored it and made it blend more into this kind of setting and i think it came out pretty well yeah uh it fits insanely well with the rest of the aesthetic of the conservation center. Uh, do you want to try and find one of these leaf insects? Oh, let's see. I put I, I put like eight yeah. in there, so. Oh, I've heard it's usually really hard to find them. Oh, see one. I found one over here. Oh, and I like a I, millisecond two. too. That's incredible. I found two actually. I just really love um the the detail on these ones, like. These are kind of like my favorite exhibit animal we have in the game so far. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say, like, in defense of the exhibit animals, because a lot of people would criticize them, is... Yeah. Like, um, you see an exhibit, right? You expect an animal to be hopping around from place to place, like a frog. Yeah. Or um, slithering around like a snake. But these guys in particular, like, especially insects, they're yeah. mostly stationary, especially if they're, like, feeling content about something. I mean, they will yeah. move around occasionally, but, but they pretty that, much stay, yeah. Especially yeah. these um, Malaysian leaf insects, and I've read that once they find a tree, they will stick to that tree for life, and so they don't move away from that tree, so they stay in that one place, getting their like, food from the leaves uh, and everything. Looks like Frontier really took that into account with a massive tree in the middle. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that does make sense. It's so sweet. Over here, we've got the Malayan tapir, which is mixed with the Barbarossa. Again, amazing habitat. I really love the foliage work and also these bars that kind of um, separate the viewing gallery from the habitat itself. I think yeah, it um, really adds a nice realistic detail. So one bit of inspiration, of course, for this exhibit. Well, not for this exhibit in particular, but just like elements of the exhibit was the San Diego Zoo. They yeah. sometimes have like an Asian pig species in with the tapir, sometimes it's Babarusa, other times it's Visayan warty pig. So I decided to throw the Babarusa in there because, well, it's a pig species and we got a pig species in the Southeast Asia pack, so yeah. I guess that works. And the reason I added those bars in particular is because tapirs are really good climbers. So <laughs> this is actually a really good way to like deter the tapirs from like mounting Scratching up onto the bank their and escaping. Faces off. <laughs> yeah. I've heard they can like bite off your hand if they c if they get close of close enough to you. That's really scary. I mean figures. They're in uh, they're in the order Parasodactyla, which is the same order as like horses, rhinos, yeah. zebras. So they're really strong. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. For the next one over here, we've got the dolls. And so again, amazing habitat. And um, I think you really want it to feel like you want to have the most maximized space for them to run around. So they have a lot of like running space in, which is not encroached in by some foliage. And I think that's a really nice detail you put in. This one in particular is again based off of the Singapore Night Safari. Uh, one thing I actually noticed about their exhibit or that is uh, very prevalent throughout is yeah. uh, the Malayan tapir exhibit that this is set in. It's actually a drive through, but the dole oh. exhibit is actually an island in the middle of the, the tapir and uh, Bornean bearded pig drive through. Wow. <laughs> so that way it sort of creates a predator prey effect. I mean, yeah. we couldn't really do it here because of the layout, mm. but what I did instead yeah. to sort of compensate was I added that hill and that promontory point where the doles can climb up and survey their surroundings then yeah it, it's just fantastic yeah let's head on out and head back to our next exhibit which is kind of like the um the, one of the big ticket animals we have the bengal tiger exhibit over here and what a perfect view of it right there in the middle yeah just frolicking through <laughs> I yeah just, i just really love it also um from the update the ability to change colors of water really is a game changing thing like a literally this really a looks like thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like treated water in like you normally see in zoos 
and I think it looks pretty amazing. Oh, it's gorgeous, especially if you um, if you want to build a marine park or whatever, you can have yeah the most crystal clear blue water. water yeah, because with the aquatic pack, you got like blueish water. Yeah, but uh, but with this recent update, um, there's a content creator I, uh, a friend I know, uh, Nicholas Linewriter. He his yeah. favorite term is blue ass water. <laughs> so we finally got blue ass water. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it, look, it looks amazing, especially the habitat as well, and it just feels like they have enough space to just walk around. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, speaking yeah. of space, one thing you'll notice about the habitat, especially in the very back, there's a sort of back moat. So um, that's a design element that I lifted from the Erlebnis Zoo Hanover in Germany. So what yep. they do with their tiger exhibit in order to like maximize the amount of quote unquote psychological space is they have a raised hill and a back moat that looks into like a dense, dense forest. So that yeah, way they so can it, like survey their surroundings and all that. Yeah. It makes and it really this, blend in. Yeah. Like it's this part is a technique of the jungle. that I put in with the proboscis monkey habitat, with this yeah. one here, and with the uh, with the next half tab, which I'm not going to reveal gonna... for the time being. <laughs> yeah. Hey there, if you're still watching this far into the video, I just want to say a big, big thank you. As a thank you gift for all the support, if you still haven't gotten your hands on the Southeast Asia pack, I'm going to be giving away a free copy to one lucky winner. To stand a chance, all you have to do is leave a comment below that includes the winky face emoji. So it can be on anything at all, but it must include that particular emoji so you can qualify. I'm going to randomly pick the winner 48 hours after this video goes up. So good luck. So over here, we're going to be taking a look at the more like newer additions they had to the zoo in the um, recent years. So over here, we've got the sun bear and the infamous Binturong. And so, the box. Oh, um, you're just you're just going to have to wait in there for a while. Let's <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, once again, he, like you said, you use that really sloped technique, which makes it um, feel like the habitat is really much bigger than it actually is, especially with, with the um, new like hammock thing we got with the uh, with the pack. I think that's a really nice uh, enrichment item. Yeah, I, I got like a ton of influences for um, for this habitat in particular. This was actually um, the climbing structure was actually based off the San Diego Zoo's Sun Bear Forest, and yeah. uh, one of the um, one of the workshop items that I used that I think really just adds to it what are these uh, faux trees by Leaf uh, Leaf Productions, oh. and it just it just really really adds to the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, originally, this um, this exhibit, in my opinion, was a lot more underwhelming when I first designed it, and then. Yeah. Uh, uh, line writer who I mentioned uh, who I mentioned earlier, he suggested that I put in this uh, ravine and this waterfall, yeah, just something really to make cool. it like more it unique. Amazing. Thank you. And I see we have a lot of mossy rocks in which. Um... <laughs> yeah, those are my favorite rocks in games. It's like, it, it, like it's like yeah, um, it's like painting in a way. Yeah, the dynamic moss in which is like paints itself on top of the rocks really gives it um a nice um touch and when you're like building so it's really di uh, creative and yeah let's head on out and go on to arbor um like the big daddy of all the exhibits over here we've got the indian elephant exhibit so yeah i just really love how you made everything feel um, like a typical elephant enclosure, but it kind of feels less of a habitat, but the same at the same time, it feels like a typical elephant enclosure. And yeah. especially these sage structures you got here, I love mm -hmm. them. I actually based them off the Oklahoma City Zoo. Um, their yeah. habitat was designed by a group called Tor Design Consortium. Oh. Uh, they what they what they typically do is they often do they often have their climbing structures based off of like I believe used telegraph poles and stuff like that and just like massive uh, timber logs and stuff like that 
and yeah. what they did for the Oklahoma City Zoo for their elephant exhibit, they had these massive shade structures with, um, I believe it's a bamboo material for like the roof of the shade structure. Yeah. So I did my best to emulate it, it as there. much as possible with the in-game uh, timber pieces and stuff. That and in terms of like the actual exhibit, I try to make it as uh, forested but as open as possible because elephants, they love to eat plants. They'll eat like, <laughs> uh, I think up to 50 pounds of food in a single day. I'd have to check the stats on that. I wanted to keep it like as uh, grassy as possible just to maintain that sort of lush environment. And um, in terms of like adding a realism aspect to it, like the, if you see the gray fences in the very back, they, those are actually part of a fence set an elephant fence set by Vihoha. Yeah, it looks amazing. It's absolutely fantastic. If there's a must-have list of stuff you needed to get from the Steam Workshop, that is Exactly, it. exactly. Next up, we're going to be looking at the museum, which we tried our best to make it look like it features different stuff from Southeast Asian culture, which is specifically more to the wildlife aspect of it. But yeah, I just really love how it turned out. Yeah. And yeah, it reminds me exactly of a museum I once went to in uh, Kerala, actually. Yeah. Where you had these like uh, wooden floors, you would walk up steps, and you would see, and you would look into slightly dusty but still very, very well kept <laughs> exhibits. Yeah. Over here, you can see we have a little bit of a view into the Bengal tiger exhibit, and I just thought like it was a really good touch, and it was actually San that um, suggested it, and. I think it really adds to the whole museum experience. And yeah, that's pretty much the museum. Okay, so over here, we're going to be getting to the little gift shop that guests can buy some souvenirs and different stuff from their trip. When you're coming out over here and walking from the main path, the marketing trick I implemented in was that we have the plushies just right over there. So when the kids see it, they probably like, oh, mommy, I want to go get one. Then the, they'll obviously want to get into the plate, this place. And also the cash register is right next to the plushies. So also kids will want to pick it as well. Yeah. So <laughs> we have some a bunch of different stuff from a bunch of amazing creators, which I got from the workshop i think a lot of stuff are from eben and obviously he's the gift shop master so <laughs> really love yeah. his amazing especially stuff. seeing his stuff in koala you yeah Lord. yeah it's amazing and uh i think these stuff are from just goran this these drums over here yeah i wouldn't just be surprised goran. if they were like yeah it looks uh, just amazing. the amount of detail he puts in just like yeah uh, something um seemingly insignificant like a sign or, or something <laughs> like that it's just incredible here's a look at it at night time so uh we didn't really want something over the top just kind of subtle lighting in which it kind of really lights up the pathing so at least you don't really like topple over something so like nothing crazy but just subtle enough so you can see at night so I think it really blends in with the area quite nicely. Oh, it does definitely, which is what you want, which is what you would want at the end of the day, like something yeah. that blends into the jungle rather than sticks out like a sore thumb. Let me know in the comments below if you still want to see a separate stop motion video showcasing how we put everything together. So that's pretty much it for the Hutan Rimba Conservation Center. If you enjoy the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you're not. And when you subscribe, be sure to turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever I post anything new. And also good luck in entering the giveaway, which I'm, I'm running. And uh, probably if you missed it, you want to head back into the video to find out how you can uh, enter for that. And yeah, I think you, we really did a really awesome job on this place. Uh, any final remarks? I was really blown away by the architecture and just like how fast we were able to create this. Yeah, and all yeah. That. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.